Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. This is the Digital Asset Investor. Today, I wanted to explain to you uh, what I believe is going to happen with the market. I wanted to start with this um, article um, that I saw this morning. It's 2018 cryptocurrency price correction, very similar to the biggest, to the biggest 2014. Okay. And what, this, what they're talking about in this article, uh, for those of you, many of you are new to the cryptocurrency market. Um, I've told you before, I've been in this since I believe like late 2013, um, somewhere in that, in that range. So I've seen a lot. And the important thing here is that I saw 2014. I was there. I saw exactly what happened. And I wanted to make a point here. All right, this is a guy that, that tweeted about this. Biggest decline in alt market, uh, altcoin market cap was 2014, 86% with a total duration of 266 days before a massive bounce. Today, we are sitting at a decline of 85% in 252 days. Um, this was done on uh, yesterday. This tweet was from yesterday. And so he was drawing a parallel between those two markets. Okay, what I want to tell you, and I want you to really emotionalize this so you really understand the place that we are right now, because this is so important to understand. As I said, I was there, and this is what was going on back then in 2014. The, the most important thing that you need to understand is that in 2014, all of the real money, the people that control the money of the world, the New York Stock Exchange, everybody on CNBC and Wall, all of the Wall Street people, they laughed at us. It, it was a big joke. It was a fraud. It was a joke. They all made fun of the crypto market. It was never going to be anything. The difference between then and now is so massive in terms of the imminent adoption, I can't stress this enough to you all. Those I, I've seen a lot of you on Twitter and a lot of you that are, that are just kind of, most of you, which if you're, if you're, if you're freaking out over the current market, you're just, you just need to, you really need to grow up a little bit because you, if you've really studied, if you've really listened to what I've said and you've really studied the history of these markets and what's happened over and over again, this is nothing new. The only thing that's new and the only thing that's much larger than you can even imagine is that adoption is imminent. It never has been imminent before. Ripple and XRP's use case has never been imminent the way it is now. But I wanted just to take you down memory lane. I wanted to go over with you a little bit of what I've been through and people have been through before because what you're seeing now is nothing new. This is absolute. The only thing that's new, and I'll say it again, the only thing that's new now is that we're having to go through this pain now, but we have the light at the end of the tunnel. You can see it, and it's right in your face. In, in past bear markets, we didn't even know if there was any light. It, it, this is, that, that's why it's so frustrating to me to hear people getting down because they have no idea what's, what's right around the corner. But I'm, I want to go over this with you. I went and looked up the historical historical data for XRP, and I went all the way back to it, this thing starts at 2013. But it's important in these kind of uh, periods that you that you understand the big picture because the big picture is what matters. All this small picture stuff, getting caught up in what's happening today, and oh no, I lost my money. You didn't lose anything as long as you hold. You didn't lose anything. All right. Listen to these numbers because this is where XRP has been and this is where it has gone and then where it's been before again. So I want you to hear this. Um, I'm going to start on December the 1st of 2013. XRP was at 5 cents. Then 
we and and at that time I was giddy because I had bought below a penny, and I thought at the time I was telling my wife, I was right, I was right, I had all this right. This is going to be huge. Then by July sixth of two thousand fourteen, XRP was at at uh, below pennies. It was at point zero zero two dollars. Okay, that was July sixth of two thousand fourteen. And so at that time, I was feeling the same way you're feeling right now. But the only difference is what I keep telling you. Wall Street was not imminent. XRP's use case was not imminent. We didn't know if this was just some stupid idea that I came up with. Oh, digital currencies. Uh, sounds cool. Sounds like a cool idea. There was nothing on the horizon back then. Ripple was saying that they were working on all these things. But there was no confirmation of all these customers and products uh, and, and production customers that had signed production contracts and Wall Street announcing that they're coming into the market. None of that. You didn't have any of that. And so you, you, I really want you to, and I say the word emotionalize because that's what everybody is right now is they're emotional. I want you to emotional, you're emotionalizing the bad emotionalize the good, the horizon, because that's where the emotion should lie, because it's coming. All right. Um, so on uh, July 6th of 2014, we were at point zero zero two dollars By June 19th, it took all the way to June 19th of 2015, we went back up to a penny in the value of XRP. I mean, I, I literally, during this time period, I had put it on the shelf. And many of you, that might be a good thing for you. I think that it's a lot more imminent, the good times now than they were back then. Uh, but, but if, if it's time for you to stop looking at the price, if that's what you need, start, go start jogging or something, but stop focusing on the negative. That will, that is not good for you. All right. So, but June 19th of 2015, it got back up to a penny. And then, do you know how long it took before it really got the traction? I, I literally woke up one in, in somewhere in the May. This, I've got a number for you on June 1 of 2017. XRP had zoomed to 33 cents. And then it danced around there and then went down for a few, for a good many months. And then on January 7th of 2018, as we all know, XRP went and peaked at $3 and 38 cents. And now as of yesterday, the close yesterday, it was around 26 cents. And so I just want you all to understand that this is the game you're playing that we are, we are in a, a paradigm shift and, and I'm going to show you two final things to really drive this point home. The first is an article. This is an article that was that came out today. Coinbase, Nasdaq, and backed three reasons to be bullish about BTC and crypto. And the article could not be more right. This it's talking about how Coinbase is going on a hiring spree and they're opening offices um, all over the place. And it's talking about how they're about to start a Bitcoin ETF and and all this stuff that's going on. They're not doing that because they don't know what's coming. They're doing it because they're doing it because they know what's coming and they know they're about to have to compete with the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, which is the one starting back. And so understand, we're in 2018. We're in the middle of a bear market that rivals the bear market in 2014. But you have something that I didn't have in 2014. You have all of these companies ramping up. You have hundreds more on ramps into crypto and off ramps out of crypto than we had in 2014. You have the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange getting into the game. You have things that I only could have dreamt of back in 2013. I, I want to gently grab you by the face and shake your head a little bit and say to you, hold, just calm down and understand that we're on the verge of some of, of something huge. And I titled this, um, I titled this video that this is, that it's going to be bigger than the world cup because it is, that's how big this, the world cup 
on a worldwide basis. I've, I've learned um, that over the last few months that my channel is worldwide. I can't just talk about the United States. On a worldwide basis, there is nothing bigger than the World Cup. But that's how big this is. It's bigger. And so I want to I want everybody to understand that. I want to show you this last article before I go, because this is huge in its own right. And the reason it's huge is because this is the popular culture. The, the you're, you're beginning to see crypto go into the popular culture. This is an L.A. Dodgers uh, article that the baseball team is going to pioneer the first ever crypto giveaway in sports. And what they're doing is it says each of the participating fans will receive a card with an individual code and a set of instructions directing them to a web page where a randomly selected digital bobblehead token is unlocked and added to the participant's Ether wallet. Uh, the number of related tokens for each player is approximately the same, and people are going to be able to buy and sell and trade these, these tokens. If you don't think that this is huge and shows you the paradigm shift that we are entering, think again, because that's what's, that is what is happening. And so, I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. And please subscribe to my channel and send this around to your friends and hit the like button because we are going places and your friends and family need to know it. Thank you.